I'm shaving my mustache because while in Walmart checking out, Cammie pointed at my mustache and said, look at that mustache. Shane's got a big old Thanksgiving haul to show you guys here in just a second, but I wanted to break in and thank you for feeding my family this Thanksgiving and several other families too. I know I'm very well aware that I could not feed my family to this magnitude without you and your presence on this channel. So whenever a holiday comes up like this or um, a, a time whenever, you know, I'm just overwhelmed by gratitude, um, I always want to be sure to thank you guys because I know exactly where it comes from, Jesus, but I know he uses you guys. I know that God provides for people through people. So I just want to thank you for your presence here on this channel. Thank you for feeding my family as well as other families this Thanksgiving. I love you guys. I'm going to give you over to Shane and you guys can see what I got to cook with tomorrow because tomorrow is a whole cooking day. Thanksgiving, baby. What? It's that most. Wait. Can't have that. Okay, it's the most wonderful time for a fat guy like me. That's right, it is Thanksgiving time. We just did the haul. Technically, this is a part one haul because we couldn't fit a bunch of stuff in buggy. So I gotta go back and get a few things here in just a little bit. But, I think it's just a few things. So I'm gonna show you guys this, and then I'm gonna turn it over to my lovely wife, and then I'll probably be back. But, hey, it's Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. The first thing that I'm gonna start here is Creepy Angel Baby TP. Let me tell you what, right now, it warms my heart that so many times I've seen in our comments, people talking about how when they go to the store and they buy their toilet paper, they have to get the Creepy Angel Baby toilet paper, or they see it and refer to it as the Creepy Angel Baby toilet paper. So that warms my heart, y'all. We got us some paper towels right here. Kiddos got, kiddos got some trees, and this one is for the girls' room, and they also wanted some color lights to go on it. Let's start right here. Y'all might be thinking, well, that don't look like nothing for Thanksgiving meal. You're right, but my wife is a bookaholic, and she needed her a Christmas book, so she got this one called Bright Lights, Big Christmas. Um, she said that this is the same author of which book? The one that she read last Christmas. The Santa suit. Oh, the Santa suit. And you liked that one pretty good, didn't you? Yeah. So, she's got high hopes for this one. Right here, we've got two big old things of eggs, which in total, I believe, is 36. Um, this is invisible. This is John Cena. You can't see this. Anyway, we've got two things of Sunny D right here. We've got a thing of Happy... Happy... Heavy whipping cream, not to be convinced with um, light whipping cream. We got us some eggnog. I'm not a big fan of eggnog. Are you drinking eggnog or are you putting it in something? She's drinking it. We've got uh, two things of sour cream here. We've got this active dry yeast. I was so proud of this. She sent me down the baking aisle and she gave me, like I had to go down the baking aisle like three or four times. I think it was more like four or five times. And um, I had to keep going back for all kinds of different stuff because it was busy in Walmart. And she sent me after active dry yeast and I, I found that like right out the gate. I was so proud of that. We've got some powdered sugar, some dark brown sugar, Hershey's cocoa, We've got some half and half, not to be confused with hole and hole. We've got some whipped topping. Right here, we've got some pumpkin spice flavored whipped topping. We've got a big old thing of whole milk. Right here, ooh, we've got some uh, cookies to pop into the oven. So we've got some festive Christmas sugar cookies, and then we've got some good old chocolate chip cookies. Right here, we've got some pie crust, because you know Rena's gonna cook something yummy. We've got two things of premium pork sausage. Why does it say sage? Does it have like sage in it? Yeah. Huh. Well, there you go. 
We've got two big old things of the naturally hardwood smoked original bacon. We've got a thing of condensed milk. Some ground cloves. Ground ginger. We got some Sharpies. And some pastel pins. Rainy got her a new envelope for our handy dandy envelope system. Uh, we've got some pineapple tidbits. We were looking for the crushed pineapple. They were actually out. But, I mean, this is pretty close, and I told Reno we could probably crush that easily, so. We got a can of green beans, which apparently that was in short supply as well. We got a thing of trash bags, which we were desperately needing. We've got four things of butter. We've got milk chocolate chips, semi-sweet chocolate chips, and butterscotch bacon chips. Did I... Yeah, okay, I read that right. We got us some granulated sugar, all-purpose flour, bread flour, Hershey's chocolate syrup. We've got some Crisco here. Corn starch, which was another one I was so proud of finding in that bacon aisle. Oh, I said that we had one green bean. We actually got two, three, four, five, Six green beans. We've got two cans of pumpkin puree. We got ground mustard. We got some ground nutmeg. We got some Dawn dish soap. Some scrubbed oh, oh my bad. Sponge daddies. Rena found this really awesome candle. This stuff smells awesome. Right here is the star of the show, Old Tom Turkey. We also got us a ham. We got this, this bristle scrubber here. Randy, you want me to tell them why we got this? Yeah. So we got this, and we also got a box of borax. And would you like to know why? Well, you know our brand new patio furniture that we just put out, um, couple videos ago well blue jeans decided she was gonna play out in the yard dirt moon pie is innocent until proven guilty <laughs> okay 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 blue jeans with the aid of moon pie were playing in the muddy yard um, and they might have decided to chill on our patio couch and it might be covered in mud so yeah i'll help you we got a big old thing of purex uh laundry detergent a big old thing of downy scent beads a thing of the downy dryer sheets we got jj a pretty little yellow shirt Perfect for fall time. We actually uh, got some outfits which Rena's gonna show you guys here in just a minute. We got some of these felt tip pins, a variety of different colors. Hey Rena! What? Did you get one out? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was missing one, that's why I was asking. We've got three of these double pack cake pans. Uh, nope, 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 sorry, my bad. We got four of the double pack cake pans. And then we got us a big old pan to cook Tom Turkey in. We got these mini uh, marshmallows. I went down there to get regular mini marshmallows and they were out. So I grabbed these, but I didn't realize that they were, huh? Yeah, I didn't realize that they were vanilla flavors. So, yay. But I also got these Big Daddy marshmallows. We've got a chocolate Oreo pie crust. My brain's not working. And that's actually it. There you have it. Again, that's not all of it. Um, yeah, I kind of took myself by surprise because I made my way around the table and I didn't realize I got to the end. So that's why I was as shocked as y'all was. Anyway, I got to go get some more stuff real quick and then I will be back to show you the last of the haul. So yeah, I'm going to turn it over to my lovely wife and I will see you in a few minutes. 
while Shane's gone, I'm going to work on tomorrow's video for you guys. I've got to finish editing up a little bit of it and get it exported and uploaded into tonight. That way tomorrow I can focus solely on preparing for Thanksgiving and cooking as much as and cooking as much as I can ahead of time. Here in a little bit, I have a uh, clothing haul to show you guys. I got the kiddos some outfits to go to Thanksgiving. Are you leaving? I love you. I love you more. Be careful, please. Gonna, Don't look at your phone. I'm gonna, Don't not even to change the music. What if I put music on before I pull out? Before, but don't touch it until you get to the parking lot. Deal. Yeah. I think I'm going to listen to some Simon and Garfunkel. I love you. I love you. Kids are going to put up groceries. I'm going to go edit a video, and then Shane will see you here in a minute. And then I'll see you later with the clothing haul. I'm back. It took me a little while because I had to go on a journey to finish getting this stuff. Um, went to Walmart. And I had to follow the list that my wife gave me. And you guys don't ever have to follow a list that Rena writes. But it, it's always, like it's not in order of where it's at in the store. So I'm going from one aisle all the way down on one end, all the way to the other aisle and down on another. Uh, that took a while. And then, unfortunately, our Walmart was busy and they were out of a few things. So then I made a run over to Food City and I had to get the last remaining stuff that I was missing. I think it's almost midnight, but I did it. Mission accomplished. So I'm going to show you what I got. Come on! First off, we had to get the essential, you know it, I know it, pepper. Um, right here, I had to get some baking powder. I almost forgot what baking powder was and it took me a little while to find it. And then I remembered they come in cans like this. I got some honey. I had to get this big honey because that's all they had. They did not have anything smaller. I got two packs of Rolos here. I don't know what they're for, but I'm going to assume it's for some kind of delicious dessert. We've got some cream cheese spread. Some salt. This stuff was hard to find too. I had to call Rena to ask what exactly this was on the list. Better than bouillon. It's like supposed to be like chicken chunks or something like that. This took forever to find. Weird place to keep it. Got a big old thing of cream of chicken. I got food coloring here. I was supposed to get liquid food coloring. There is no such thing in that store, but I did find gel food coloring. One thing that I was sitting there was after was green M&M's and unfortunately there was not a single bag of just ordinary green M&M's. So I got these red and green ones. I think that should still suffice. This is another thing that took me a little while to find because I didn't realize there was a such thing as Reese's Thins. Um, so I had to call Rena and ask her what this was. And she had there on her list specifically 36... Um, Reese's Thins. So then I had to call her to confirm, did you mean like 36 cups? Which these don't tell us how many is in here, so I bought three packs. Or like 36 bags. Because I really hope it's not 36 bags. Thankfully it was. This I'm proud of because she didn't tell me to get this and I passed by it and I was like, did we buy oven bags? And so I went on and picked this up just in case and I'm glad I did. Because we didn't get those. We've got some stuff and mix here. I can't wait. We've got some white uh, cheddar cheese. Um, because that's all they had. Did you need more? Tomorrow, whenever uh, I take that garbage off, I can run by there and see if they got any more. I've got some white uh, cheddar cheese here, along with regular cheddar cheese. Um, there was another entry on the um, on the list for cheddar cheese again, and I'm assuming because it was on hash brown casserole, I'm assuming it was this kind, so I got that as well. We've got some chicken broth here, some macaroni elbows, big old thing of baking soda, creamy peanut butter. You know it, you love it, you thought I was going to forget it for the holidays, I'm not going to. Hashtag Tater Nation. And on top of that, hashtag Sweet Tater Nation, which also describes me. 
We got a thing of buttermilk here. Hold on. There we go. We got a thing of buttermilk here. We got us some white onions. Uh, right here, I, Rena asked me if there was anything special that I wanted. And I said I wouldn't mind to have some coleslaw. And then she suggested we just get some store-bought coleslaw. Um, then we got a thing. Yeah, Rena's not um, a connoisseur of coleslaw. I actually really like coleslaw, but coleslaw is one of those things where it is either really, really good or really, really nasty. There's never anything in between. So I'm hoping and praying this is really, really good. We also got a thing of corn on the cob for the stuff that they didn't have. I got two things of shredded half browns. Let me tell you what right now. Walmart was sold out of these things. The only thing they had was like the hash brown patties and that was it. I've never, like it was so funny to see some of the areas that was bare in Walmart. Like the cheese aisle was really bare. This aisle was really bare. Another thing they didn't have in Walmart was pie pans. So I got this pack of two, I think it's two, yeah, two pie pans for Rini. Um, I have never in my entire life ever heard of Le Gruyere cheese. Um, but I looked everywhere in Walmart and couldn't find it and I was like, I know with it being that specific She's gonna need it. So I went to Food City and I found it and I was so proud But I'm kind of mad that it's itty bitty and this stuff is pretty expensive And then finally this wasn't on the list But Rena loves these things and I felt like after a stressful shopping day She could use a Christmas tree cake because you know Christmas tree cakes bring out the joy in all of us So there you have it that's the last of the haul. It was a little bit of an adventure, like I said, but I did it, mission accomplished. Everything on the list got checked off. It got checked twice. I was Santa Claus tonight. But anyway, that's it. I'm gonna turn it back over to my beautiful wife, and I will see y'all later, and happy Thanksgiving! I'm sitting in the dark because the day before Thanksgiving, my power company decided to come out and fix the pole that has, there's been an order for for like three months. I am told Shane, I was like, what if I had been cooking? <laughs> what if I had been cooking? I would have been out there telling on Jesus loves them. <laughs> Once the power comes back on, I'll show you guys my Ross haul. My dogs don't like it because there's people out there also, like they don't, they don't like it. Binks and Tate are having a fit. Thanks. <laughs> Mixy, do you don't like company? Why are you gonna be a hermit for? He's on alert. He does not like company. <laughs> Tater don't either. Jesus loves them so much. So much. He died for them, Marina. He loves them so much. The day before Thanksgiving, my powers cut off, and I'm left with this. It is so bad. They struck dirt all the way down the daggone hill. In all seriousness, I'm thankful for our line men, and I'm thankful that they came and fixed the um, lines up there because it desperately needed it. It had had an order for it for three, four months. So I'm thankful it's done. It's just, whoo. <laughs> Dang. I cannot get over how bad that looks. I'm headed to take Nanny some Olive Garden uh, for lunch and then I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna cook my life away, cook the evening away, and cook try. Cook my life, cook my life away. I'm gonna try to get all of my desserts done today. Hopefully that will take a load off me tomorrow because I, where I have really bad ADHD, I don't know when to cook I don't know what to cook. I had to look it up. I have a whole Pinterest board. If you follow me on Pinterest, I'm barely like over there. But when it comes to Thanksgiving dinner, I was like, you know what? I could put all of my recipes I want to make into this one pinned binder and go off that. So if you follow me on Pinterest, you saw me adding a crap ton of stuff to a Thanksgiving dinner lineup binder. So I have all of it lined up that way, but I just don't know when to cook it. Like do you put, I know you put your turkey on first and then your ham on, but then do you make the mashed potatoes? Do you make the green beans? Do you make the mac and cheese? Like I don't know, is that stuff going to get cold while it's waiting on the other stuff to get 
cooked? I don't know. So that's what confuses me about it. So I'm usually like, it's very chaotic for me on Thanksgiving. I love doing it. I love hosting it because like I love feeding my family. I'm always cooking Thanksgiving and while I'm cooking Thanksgiving, the kiddos and Shane are watching the Macy's Day Parade. That's like a tradition for us. Especially with Nanny not being able to cook this year. Um, it's kind of a big deal. Nanny won't eat my food. God bless her soul. I don't blame her. It's not because she doesn't like the way I cook. It's because she she won't eat where dogs are. Like she was raised, my mama raised her in a way that like you don't have dogs in the house. If you touch, yeah, cats in the house, no animals in the house. If you touch an animal, you go wash your hands at the spigot before you can even touch her screen door. As a kid, I was a dog lover even back then, so I would have a dog and it would have to be outside and I hated that. Cause I'm like, what's the point in having a family member if you gotta put them outside? I can't go put Shane outside. I would have uh, dogs outside and I would pet them and I would have to go with a bar of soap, wash my hands at the <laughs> with a water hose at the water spigot and then go open Mama's screen door before she would let me come in or she wouldn't let me come in. If I forgot and touched the screen door, she would go out there and Clorox the heck out of it, the finish off of it. I mean, seriously. So. Nanny, Nanny is to this day just like that. She will not eat even as much as she loves me. She will not eat somewhere that has animals in the house. Shane tells her all the time, if you see half the back ends of the restaurants that she eats at, she wouldn't worry about a little old animal because he's been in the background of restaurants doing their system work and seen rats the size of baby kittens. Baby kittens and roaches and piles of dead mice. Uh, so he tells her all the time if she's seen that kind of stuff she wouldn't eat nowhere. So instead I'm gonna get her Cracker Barrel for Thanksgiving because they have dressing and stuff. Um, that way she at least has a Thanksgiving meal. <laughs> Cause she's definitely just not, she's not able to cook like she used to. It's that time of the year when you're happy not jerky. The time of the year when you sit and eat turkey. Yeah. By the way, I don't wear jackets. I just bring blankets. <laughs> she has never worn jackets. <laughs> to cover up with. She doesn't wear toe-closed like... <laughs> shoes or shoes. She I do wear, I wear Crocs. Little holes don't count. <laughs> it looks like sponges. You look like you got little sponges on your feet. We're almost here at the Olive Garden, so I will catch back up with you guys, and we will do some cooking.
we're back home. I'm gonna quickly show you what I got at Ross because I got the kiddos Thanksgiving outfits at Ross. Y'all know everything, every single thing except for one yellow shirt that y'all saw earlier that my kids wear are from Ross. It's just everything. Everything my kids wear it's from Ross. Ross is my jam. It's always been my jam. Everybody knows that. I yell about it and have yelled about it for the past three years. Not sponsored at all. I don't get a dime from them. They get all my dimes from me. I love, I love Ross. I can always find the coolest things there. I'm going to show you real quick what I got there. Most of it is for the kiddos Thanksgiving outfits, but I did get a few more things because the kiddos are needing a few things. One of my kiddos jeans have turned into capris uh she's growing like a weed first and foremost i got this candy cane swirl eos lip balm now with these right here i'm playing with my life because i don't know if you remember if you've been around long enough to know whenever i first started my channel i detested these things because i found a, a layer of mold growing around the outside rim of mine so I'm very careful when I get these now, but I couldn't pass up the peppermint swirl, you know, like the candy cane swirl. And I love these. I have a ton of these in my pocketbook already, different flavors. I have a pumpkin one, an apple one, all those things. So I was really excited to find this, and it was $3.99. Me and my girls are always needing new hair bows. And most of the time, I pick out the black ones, but they really saw these and they wanted the color ones. So I guess y'all are going to see me with hot pink and purple and yellow and blue hair ties in my hair. I got these for $4.99, I believe. Cami is a hat fanatic and so i found this three pack for 7.99 he's got a black one he's got a gray one and he's got this really pretty brown one that i think we're gonna wear on thanksgiving depending on which one he wants to wear but i'm pretty sure he's been on this one i'm pretty sure it's gonna be that one got all these for 7.99 three and they're really good quality this is colton's thanksgiving shirt we're going with the plaid plaid sweater this year and this was $8.99. This is Cammie's Thanksgiving sweatshirt slash long sleeve shirt. It's like a um what are those pajamas? They're like white and they have that texture on them. It's like that kind of texture and get this. I got it for $4.99. This nice vol orange long sleeve shirt for $4.99. You guys know my girls are obsessed with Stitch. We can't pass up this holiday Stitch shirt. Anything holiday, my kids are obsessed with. So when we pass something and it has Christmas colors on it, Christmas lights, Christmas trees, they always go in for it. They know. They're like, Mama, we need a holiday shirt. They'll wear them even in the summer. They don't care. This was $4.99. You can't beat that. Stitch, come on now. And because one of them got one, you know, the other one had to get one. This is a mini one, and this one was $4.99 as well. Disney. You cannot be $4.99 for a holiday Disney shirt. This one even blows me away more. Rainbow High. My girls are obsessed with Rainbow High right now. My girls love it. I've even sat down and watched a couple of episodes with them, and I get into the drama. It's like... It's like little kid drama, fashion, and stuff like that. I sat down and watched a few of them with them, but they love Rainbow Highs. They collect the Rainbow High girls. Get this. Are you kidding me? $3.99. I got these pair of Lee jeans, okay? They're size medium, they're size 10 to 12. And they have these cute little cuffs at the bottom. They're dark wash. I got these for my kiddo who is growing like a weed and growing out of all her jeans. I love getting their jeans at Ross. It's the only place I get them because look at that price now this one is just an extra pair for my littlest kiddo my tiny kiddo she needed a pair to go with her thanksgiving outfit this is a light wash she doesn't own a light wash pair of jeans so i got her these and they are there you have it nine nine on and then look at these flared leg jeans with like the rough cut on the bottom for my girls this one's for the one that's growing like a weed she needed two really good pair of jeans because none of them that she has fit her. $12.99. Are those not just the cutest things ever? My girls are obsessed with cardigans and they don't have near enough, they say. So when we go shopping, they're always looking for cardigans. We found this hooded one for $10.99. It's striped sweater material and has a hood on it. This is one of them's Thanksgiving outfit. It's like this really soft, almost Sherpa type of style shirt. $8.99. Got the other one the same one, just a different color. $10.99. Don't ask me why this one's $10.99. <laughs> and then I got them a pink, it's very pretty pink, cardigan and it's got a hood on it and it's a very soft material. 
My girls love that material, and they already took the tag off this, but it was $11.99. I wish I could shop at Ross for all my clothes. Being plus size, you can't find clothes at Ross, but it's a little bit difficult sometimes. They're already like gone through. But bless Johnny, just know my kids will forever be decked out in Ross for as long as they're under my roof because that's just how good the prices are. <laughs> you get brand names, not that that matters because like I said, we get character stuff there, all sorts of stuff. Brand names, nice quality clothes for a really reasonable price. Now that I showed you the goods, let's start making the goods. So this is what the Thanksgiving lineup looks like. We've got the main courses right here and then we have desserts below. I've got to the right things that we're going to do, try to do today. I've got turkey, ham, sausage balls, mashed taters, sweet potato pie, really casserole, baked mac and cheese, southern green beans, hash brown casserole, homemade from scratch rolls, homemade cinnamon butter if I had the time, corn on the cob, coleslaw, and chicken and dumplings. That's what I'm going to try to get done, this whole thing. Dessert-wise, I'm going to try to do homemade pumpkin pie, um, some sort of no-bake peanut butter pie, chocolate cake made from scratch, peanut butter cookies if I had the time, and maybe some Rice Krispie treats that look like little pumpkins. What I'm going to try to get done today is at least the desserts and maybe the casseroles, but definitely the desserts. I'm going to focus on the desserts possibly get the hash brown casserole done maybe if i depending on how if i have the time or not because hash brown casserole isn't really hard i really just need to throw it in a pan so that i can throw it in the oven whenever i go to bake it sweet potato casserole is a little bit different because you've got to boil the sweet taters you got to cut and dice them first then once you boil them you got to mash them put a bunch of ingredients to make the filling and then make all the crumbles and stuff separately really it's not going to put me out any time if i wait to do the casseroles tomorrow I, but i definitely need to get those desserts done today and then on the agenda for tomorrow, which is actually Thanksgiving, it's basically just all the main courses, the turkey, the ham, and all of the sides, possibly the casseroles added. I'm starting off with making this no-bake peanut butter pie. Now, I didn't tell my family I had cheesecake filling in it, but they loved it, and they usually hate cheesecake. So if you're not a cheesecake fan, you might still want to try this. I got some cream cheese, some milk chocolate chips, some butterscotch chips, a little bit of powdered sugar, a whole big old bag of powdered sugar, this gluten-free chocolate snap pie crust thing because they didn't have any Oreos left. I just got what I could get at the grocery store and I didn't throw a fit. <laughs> I'm going to also use some vanilla. I'm using imitation vanilla because real vanilla ain't in my tax bracket. <laughs> I'm using special dark Hershey syrup, not because I love the special dark kind. I don't like dark chocolate, but it's all they had left creamy peanut butter make sure it's creamy not crunchy i don't know how it turned out with crunchy and heavy whipping cream definitely heavy whipping cream is essential i don't know if you guys can tell but i am really really nervous and i don't get nervous very often i can come on here and about say near anything to all you guys but when it comes to cooking for my family i get super nervous because like what if i fail what if i don't do good but my dream is for everybody to come to my house when my kiddos are older with their families. So I was going to suck it up and try it. The more years I try it, the better I get at it. So that's exactly what I did. I used a cup of heavy whipping cream and a couple of tablespoons of powdered sugar. I didn't know what I was making at this point, but come to find out, I was making homemade like whipped topping. <laughs> I didn't even know it until it became homemade whipped topping. I was like, oh snap, was that what, is that what I was cooking this whole time? <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> so so I just beat it until it formed stiff peaks, which is when you take it up and it stays like that. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with making stiff peaks. So when I can make a meringue or a, a meringue goo, as I call it, or stiff peaks, I'm so excited. So I didn't know that whole time I was making whipped topping. I was literally making whipped cream and I didn't even think about it. I thought I was just making a mixture. No, it was actual whipped cream. And it tasted way better than store-bought. Shane was my honorary dishwasher during all of this. He helped me so much because there's no way where I struggle to go back and forth. And if I, I struggle to stay on task. So Shane was like, you know what? Since you struggle to stay on task, because he knows me better than anybody, he's like, you go ahead and do all that. And he's like, I'll be over here washing dishes when you need me. So I would holler for him and be like, hey, Shane, I need you. <laughs> I whipped up the cream cheese. I added some peanut butter and some powder sugar 
and it always happens to me. I don't, I don't ever learn my lesson. Sometimes I forget and I just go, I go like from zero to 30 real quick. <laughs> I really need to remember to ease into that, that spinning cycle. I'm taking my homemade whipped cream and I'm folding it into the peanut butter cheesecake mixture. All of these recipes are going to be linked down below and it will give you step by step what to do and how much of what to do. <laughs> My favorite part of this dessert was the mixtures did take a couple of minutes to make and fold into each other, but this doesn't have to be baked. So you just flatten it out into your pie crust. It's preferably one that's already baked so you don't have to bake your own pie crust. You could have made your own pie crust with Oreos. That's what the recipe called for, but I just didn't. <laughs> I'm flattening out the mixture really, really smoothly into my pie crust, and I'm going to top it with my toppings with like the, um, the chocolate chips, the butterscotch chips, the dark chocolate syrup and then I melted down some peanut butter to like fancily throw on there. If I could omit one thing going back and knowing what I know now and how it tasted, I would definitely omit, is that the right word omit? I would definitely omit the butterscotch chips. They just didn't go well. It didn't like, I don't know. It, was, it felt like the tastes were competing with one another. So I would definitely take those out. I don't know what I was thinking. The recipe didn't call for that. I just wanted to do something different. It actually called for peanuts on top, but none of us really just love peanuts. So I decided to put chocolate chips and butterscotch chips on top and then do like a little sprinkle of melted peanut butter because Shane really loves peanut butter and dark chocolate syrup. I left this in the fridge all night long and by Thanksgiving day, it tasted so good and look at that detail chef emerald where you at next is the pumpkin pie which is the one i was most concerned about i have this handy dandy pie pan here i have some evaporated milk two eggs room temperature i have some pumpkin spice some ground ginger i had to get the expensive one because great value was out <laughs> i have some ground cloves and then I have some ground cinnamon. All of these spices are absolutely 100 billion percent necessary. I also have some salt. I didn't want to make the pie crust because I was already making so much from scratch. I was worried I'd mess it up. So I just got these refrigerated pie crusts and they were ready to use. I have granulated sugar here and then of course pumpkin puree for the pumpkin pie. First thing I'm doing is I'm adding all my dry ingredients, a cup of sugar, all of my spices. I kind of just eyeballed. I didn't want it to be overly powerful and things like cloves and ginger can do that. So I just added a very little pinch. I mixed all of that up really, really good. That's just my sugar and all the dry stuff. Then in a separate bowl, I added both of my eggs and I whisked the heck out of them. I made sure like there was no weird looking, make, make, basically you want it looking like egg milk. You know how whenever you whisk eggs really, really good, it turns really milky. That's the look you're going for whenever you're making this. Otherwise, it'll be like a fried egg in the middle of your pumpkin pie. <laughs> I added the pumpkin puree to the whisked eggs and then I whisked that up really really good to where there was no clumps or chunks because nobody wants to bite into a pumpkin pie and get a big old fried egg chunk in your mouth that's just not good once that's mixed i add my evaporated milk and i mix it again there's a lot of mixing involved with pumpkin pie <laughs> you mix your wrist out <laughs> and then once that's whisked i add my dry ingredients which is just my sugar and all of my spices whisk together. I add all that in there and I whisk it really good. The mixture is going to be super runny. I used this pie crust. I've never used a store-bought pie crust. I've only used like the the you know like graham cracker ones and oreo ones these i didn't know what it was supposed to look like whenever i patted it out into the pan so i just rolled with it and then i overfilled it with the pumpkin so i tried to like lift them up so that the pumpkin couldn't pour out i don't think it's supposed to be that full <laughs> overfilling it was a big mistake i just didn't want to waste any mixture right here is pouring out to the bottom of my stove so what do i do I, I go get a wet scrub daddy and cause a bunch of smoke and stuff I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I just didn't want it burning and setting the smoke alarm off because that happens to me at least twice whenever I cook a meal like this. Now, I have memory issues really badly, but I can't remember if I've ever tried eggnog. I don't think I have because honestly, it's a taste I think I would remember. You can definitely taste the spices in it. Like that clove is strong, but the texture of it is like heavy whipping cream. So it honestly feels like something you shouldn't really be drinking especially cold. Do people drink it warmed? Should I have warmed it? I don't know. Really, the consistency is thicker than even like hot chocolate. It's not terrible. 
but it's something that I feel like I shouldn't be drinking by itself. I feel like it's, I feel like I'm drinking heavy whipping cream. But there's a white hot chocolate eggnog recipe back here that looks really good. I'm gonna pretend to like it for the sake of the holiday. Next is the chocolate cake. I got semi-sweet chocolate chips here. Make sure it's semi-sweet and not the milk chocolate. Three room temperature eggs, sour cream. I've never put sour cream in a cake. Baking powder. I also got some Hershey's cocoa powder. I also have some salt. I got some instant coffee here. Another weird thing. Buttermilk, another weird thing. Um, baking soda. So I got baking soda and baking powder. I also have all-purpose flour. All-purpose. And then I have granulated sugar, not powder sugar this time. I got my imitation vanilla out again. I've got some canola oil and some heavy whipping cream. Once again, we're going to do all of our dry ingredients, whisk them together real quick, and then I'm going to add all of my wet ingredients. Now it's time to work on pretty much the easiest part of this whole thing, which is the icing for the chocolate cake. It's a whipped icing. I put my heavy whipping cream on the stove and waited till it came to a almost overflowing boil. <laughs> and then I moved it aside, put in my semi-sweet chocolate chips, and I mixed them in really good until it became smooth. I separated this mixture into two parts. One I left just sitting in the pot and the other I put in a mixing bowl and let it cool down. Once it was cooled down, I started whisking it up until it was forming stiff peaks. There's on stiff peaks again. And this was gonna be my based whipped icing. So this is what was gonna go on top of the cake. And then the one to the right you see there that's been left alone, that second half, it's gonna be what is drizzled on top of the whipped icing. So this cake needs to be refrigerated it's a very spongy texture, but it's very dense too. It's not light and fluffy at all. It's almost a brownie texture, but it's really, really, really good. It's not overly sweet because we used a lot of the cocoa powder and we used a lot of the semi-sweet chocolate chips. So it's not overly sweet. It's got that very just chocolate, cocoa chocolatey taste, if that makes sense. It's not one of my favorite chocolate cakes I've ever had. I like my chocolate cake sweet, but it is really good. And Shane doesn't like sweet things that much. So he really liked this. The kiddos were a fan of this and the peanut butter pie. That was their two favorite things. Jade loved the pumpkin pie because she's like me. I love pumpkin pie, but they really, really love this chocolate cake over anything. So the kiddos approved of it. I just like mine a little bit sweeter. Like I said, this was a more cocoa 
tasting chocolate cake versus, you know, a cake that tastes sort of milk chocolatey. It's definitely not a milk chocolatey tasting cake. It's a lot heavier than that and um, not really bitter, but it has that bitter twang to it. I covered it up, waited for everything to cool real good, and then stuck it in the fridge, and you eat this cake cold. You could eat it warm, but the whipped icing would definitely, it would definitely melt. I started out the next morning, Thanksgiving Day. I am washing out my sink really good so I can play with this turkey. Happy Thanksgiving! My turkey is literally chilling in a five gallon bucket. It works. Oh, you pulling out the guts? Oh, oh, it feels so far. I can't. And yes, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. There's nothing else in there. <laughs> There's nothing else in there. I don't want to make that happen. Oh, so Wait, Wait, is the neck part in here? We hooked the turkey leg. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, jeez, Louise. I have to somehow get this turkey into that narrow opening of that bag. Back to barrel! You cracked your barrel over. And you feel like a rock star. Dolly Parton's at Cracker Barrel! Dolly Parton's at Cracker Barrel! Oh my gosh! Entrees. Wish me luck. I'm about to try my hand. You hear horns in the background. About to try my hand at Made From Scratch Texas Roadhouse Dinner Rolls. I'm ambitious. Woo! I'm so ambitious today. Oh! That smells good too. Can I try it? No. I've got to move on to something else and the rolls are rising so I've written out sloppily <laughs> a little list for me to do once they're risen so I can move on to something else and find a different recipe which is going to be prepping this casserole right here uh, so that I can go ahead and get started on it and then just move right along. I've got my chopped onion, two cups of cheddar cheddar, a can of cream and chicken, a cup of sour cream, salt and pepper in here and I'm going to mix it up really good. I'm about to add my hash browns and then put it in a 9 by 13 pan and let it sit and wait until I can pop it in the oven. I'm struggling because I don't know what to cook. Like, I I feel like I need to have my green beans on, but I feel like I still need to make my sweet potato pie, but I feel like when am I going to have time to peel potatoes? I have an hour and a half left. This is, this is a lot. Starting on the sweet potato pie, got the sweet potatoes boiling, assemble the whole thing, and then do like the hash brown casserole and wait until the turkey's done to pop it in there. I have all of my sweet potato casserole parts all ready here. I gotta mash this and add the stuff into this. Then I'll be able to just layer it. I'm down to 37 minutes though. Y'all, I made dough. It might as well be Pillsbury dough. It looks so good. These have rested for two hours and it's rose and doubled in size. I'm about to make them into rolls and they're gonna rest for 30 minutes while I bake all the other stuff and then we'll be ready to go. Shane, look at my dough. Look. Oh man, I can't wait to eat that. Look at that. Look at that. All right, so we're going to cut it in half. I know you're not saying pizza. Now I'm going to let these rest for 30 minutes while I bake the um, sweet potato pie and the hash brown casserole. Alright, these have been waiting on their moment to shine. Look at this. 
I made that from scratch, y'all. I boiled the sweet taters, everything. Made the mixture, everything. Homemade, I didn't make marshmallows. And then, homemade hash brown casserole. I'm gonna pop these suckers in the oven. Look at them, they look so pretty. I got the casseroles in the oven. I got two pots of mashed taters, or the taters, boiling for me to mash them. I got a pot of mac and cheese noodles going. I'm about to start on the chicken and dumplings. Every recipe, even if I don't show you guys, every recipe is going to be linked down below. These are not any of my recipes, except for the chicken and dumplings. Once the sweet potato casserole is done, the hash brown casserole still has to go for a little bit, so I'm going to put the rolls in because they're about, they sat about 30 minutes. So once these 10 minutes are up, I'm going to put the rolls in, leave the hash brown casserole to cook for that remaining 10 minutes, and the sweet potato casserole will be done. I'm going to mash up the taters. I'm not going to do baked mac and cheese, but I am going to do the homemade mac and cheese sauce because I don't have like Velveeta cheese or nothing, fake cheese. Everything I've made today has basically been from scratch, y'all. <laughs> like I've been. I didn't get to make the sausage balls, um, which I'm really upset about because I really want to try those this year, but I've been working my booty off since my feet hit the ground, and I've, I'm pretty proud of what I've got done so far. So, like I said, if I don't show you the recipe, don't get mad at me. I promise every recipe that I can find will be linked down below. It's all from Pinterest. I went haywire on Pinterest, except for the mashed potato recipes, which is, you know, you just make mashed potatoes the same way. And then the chicken and dumplings. I will update you guys. Ready to go in the oven. Y'all, <laughs> I made it happen. Thank you, Jesus. Check it out. All right, y'all, check it out. We've got mashed potatoes. I actually have two of these homemade potatoes grown. No, I'm just kidding. Not potatoes grown and everything, <laughs> but homemade. All right, check this out. This one I'm proud of. Homemade mac and cheese. Like, I made that sauce from scratch. Look how cheesy it looks. 16-pound turkey. Brown, woo, brown sugar ham. Chicken and dumplings made from scratch with real sweet potatoes. Sweet potato casserole. Hash brown casserole also made from scratch. <laughs> made from scratch dinner rolls. I made those y'all. Like I actually made those dough and everything. Ah, peanut butter no bake pie. Made from scratch pumpkin pie. Made from literally scratch. I made cake and everything. Chocolate cake. My stomach is eating itself. Every bit of everything on here is literally made from scratch. I'm ready. I'm ready. Y'all, Jesus, Holy Spirit carried me through that. I'm telling y'all, I've been cooking since early wee hours of the morning. I haven't even sat down. You can't forget the green beans. The only great thing on the table. Happy Thanksgiving. We're going to eat. I am so thankful you are here. Thank you for being here and just being awesome. I love y'all. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not. Whatever it is, wherever you're at, know that I love you. But Jesus loves you more. I'll see y'all later.